I mean, just it's been a uh, it's been a long it's been a long year. Um, it feels like the twilight zone. It feels like um, it's, it's just it's 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 just been really interesting. But um, to have the as young of a team that we've had that we have, and um, to have the maturity uh, to make ourselves available for every single game that we played. I mean, that's that's the the first thing I'm proud of. Um, of, of of the maturity of our players, um, and also the just the you know the support from the administration, um, coaching staff, uh, the medical people, my trainer Dallas. I mean, he's the one having to administer COVID tests, doing all the things that he's having to do. I mean, you know, he's the guy behind the scenes. It's had to do a lot more than anybody else, and um, you know he, he's made it possible for us and to educate us to make sure that you know we we've been able to play the games we played, and so. Sometimes those guys are forgotten about, but they're the reason why that you know we're able to to be where we're at now. And so um, it's a good way to finish off the regular season uh, to, to, on a quick turnaround. I thought our guys did a really good job of understanding the scouting report. UNLV is a, a really dangerous team offensively. If you don't guard them the right way, if you allow them to shoot a lot of threes, I mean they become really dangerous. And I thought we just did a tremendous job of of defending the three point line. I thought our effort on Hamilton, who had, you know, ended up with 17, but man, he had to work for every single shot he got. David Jenkins, we really wanted to minimize his touches, did a really good job of, of limiting his shots and just really making them work. And um, you know, that's a credit to the entire team. And it's nice to have a full, a full complement of players on the bench to where now you don't have to play guys when guys are tired. Um, if guys don't want to sit down and, and guard or they don't want to do things that ultimately equate to winning, well, guess what? Um, the bench is where you need to be. And uh, we haven't had the ability to teach guys through the bench. Um, and so to have a group of guys tonight that just really came together and fought, you know, you know, fought, to fought for the University of Wyoming. And I think that's when you have a young team sometimes they don't realize that, um, and everybody wants to tell them it's about the, the, you know, the, the letters on the back of the jersey. And, and that's not how you're going to win here. That's not how you're going to be a part of this program. Um, you know, we're about the University of Wyoming. And it's a privilege to play at the University of Wyoming. Um, it's not a right. And um, I think those guys are starting to realize that um, you know, it's, there's something to be said about playing for the University of Wyoming and how special it can be. And uh, we got a long ways to go. Uh, we're only at the base of the mountains. I told them it's, you know, it's hard to climb Everest. You, know, so you just don't just make your way up Everest by not going to base camp and climatizing for two weeks and then making your way up from, from there. Um, and so it's, it's hard. And uh, you know what? Winning's hard. And um, to, with the team that we had, with being as, you know, one of the youngest teams in the country, I think there's only right now 13 teams from an experience standpoint that are as young as us. And for us to right now at least ensure a winning record, I mean, that's, that's a step in the right direction. Um, you know, do we want to be better? No question. But you know what? You got to take the small victories along the way. And I thought, you know, tonight was definitely a step in the right direction. Hopefully we can carry that momentum into uh, Las Vegas. Cody. Graham had a tough assignment Thursday night in Logan. We all knew that going in. Uh, didn't really go his way. Uh, but tonight, do you think he... Do you think he, what do you think he took from that game in Logan? And uh, think he took out a little aggression tonight? Well, you, well, it's, you got a choice. Um, you got a choice if you want to, how you want to respond. I mean, that's, your response is everything in life. And um, his response after getting his butt kicked by Kata was that he showed up in the office the next day at 11 o'clock when other guys, you know, could have said, hey, like, I'm just going to wait for practice. But he got in and came in and got an early workout in. Then he came to my office and he watched film. Um, he watched all his offensive clips against Kata, watched all the defensive clips, and then he went and got another workout in before he practiced. And um, you know, Graham has a lot of pride, and that's that's what's going to make him a special player. Um, and he wants to be great, and he's starting to realize what it takes. And sometimes you have no idea what it takes until you run into a guy like Kata. Um, that hey, there's a there's another level that you got to play at, and you're never going to be seven foot and have a seven four wingspan like Kata. But you got to think, okay, the next time I meet that guy or down the road, how am I going to be the guy that comes out on top? And he's got the talent, um, as we've seen, to where 
down the road, I mean, man, I mean, as I've been telling you guys from day one, I mean, he's, he's going to be, he's one of those guys you can throw the ball inside and, and good things are going to happen. There's not very many guys like that in college basketball. So his response um, and going up against one of the guys that's one of the better defensive players in the league. I mean, he just, Dion did an unbelievable job on, on Kata when they played those guys and, and for Graham just to go right at him and to really frustrate him. Because if you get him out of the game, then defensively they don't become nearly as good. And um, credit to Graham and just his physicality and uh, just thankful to have the opportunity to be able to coach somebody like him. Michael. Uh, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, we saw uh, Drake out here shooting after after uh, one of the Nevada games. And when he talked to us earlier, he could name, like, he could list off all of his bad stats over a, a certain stretch. Uh, he obviously had a nice night tonight. He, he's, he's kind of bounced back from that kind of rough patch. Is he, it seems like he's kind of a, a, a tireless worker, a guy who really puts everything into it. Well, that's, that's why we recruited him. Um, and that's in the recruiting process, you got to try to identify those guys. There's, as I said before, there's the, the live it guys, which there's not very many that live it. Um, you know, there's more love it guys, but um, there's a lot more guys that just like it. And um, you really want to try to eliminate the guys that just like it because this is way too hard um, and you're way too high of a level where if you don't live it or you don't love it, you're at the wrong level. And, um, you know, the thing about Drake is that he's, he's what you saw after that game. He's in the gym all the time, um, whether that's on his own, you know, whether that's with Coach DeWeese, um, those guys. And, we, and, we, and he's not the only one. I mean, Hunter Thompson, I mean, he's, he's in here at nauseam getting shots up. Sometimes I'm like, you know, Hunter, you might be better off taking a few, you know, a few less shots. And, um, you know, he's got, he wants to prove that he's a good player and he wants to, he wants to prove, he wants to leave Wyoming a winner and he understands that he has to put in the work. And so it's a credit to those guys. It's credit to my assistants who, um, you know, who get in the gym with them. Um, and that's a big part of our program is development. You can't, you can't win at Wyoming unless you develop a Josh Adams into the Josh Adams that's playing for a Euro Cup team. You can't, you can't win at Wyoming if you don't develop a, a Larry Nance into an NBA player. And that's, that's what we got to do with the guys that we have right now is that we got to develop them. And it's something that unless they don't, and, and they got to be able to, you know, they have to want to be in the gym. And uh, when you get to this time of the year, you know, it's a credit to our program when guys still want to show up early, stay after practice, and, you know, on their off days want to come in and work. That's, that's how you build a program. That's how you win at the University of Wyoming. Davis. Jeff, you said earlier in the week that it was unlikely that Kenny would play again. I guess what changed to make you guys feel comfortable when back out there? Um, well, I mean, the, the doctors are what changed. Um, and doctors, um, you know, made it clear that he wasn't going to, you know, put it in harm's way. Uh, he was on, a, you know, Kenny was on a minutes restriction at uh, – at Utah State um, and really just kind of wanted to get his feet wet and didn't expect much from him. Um, but, you know, he's somebody that was playing so well before he got hurt and he just adds another develop or, you know, just another layer to our team and just his, his ability to play off the ball. I mean, just makes the life a lot easier for our guards when they drive because he has such a good feel for cutting, his ability to make open shots. And then his, um, his, his intelligence on the defensive end it just allows us to have one, one more guy that's not going to make those little mistakes that allow you to get beat. And so, um, as I told him, too, even after the doctor gave him the, the clearance, like, hey, unless you feel comfortable with it, um, you know, I don't want you playing. And so it was the doctor's decision. It was his decision. Um, but he wants to get out there. Kenny likes to compete. Kenny loves to play. Um, and then Owen – you know, we didn't know whether or not, you know, depending on when he was able to see the foot specialist, um, which that's why he didn't make the trip to Utah State. Uh, and during that time, the, you know, he felt like he was, it was good enough to where he can get back going again, which we felt like that was the case for a while. But we really wanted to make sure, especially when you were dealing with, a, you know, an Achilles injury like that. Um, and so he's a guy that, you know, I wasn't going to throw into the mix tonight after I mean, he hasn't practiced. I mean, he's, he's gone five on zero, And so... But it's nice to have another body, especially when you go down to Vegas and um, guys maybe get in foul trouble. At least now they'll have a few more days under his belt to where um, feel comfortable throwing them in there. Michael. Usually the, the last home game of, of the season is a senior night sort of thing. Obviously you guys didn't, you don't have any, 
uh, the only people there were a couple Spirit Squad members that went out there at halftime. I, I know the youth has been something you've talked about a lot this year, and it's been to the detriment sometimes. But you know, when you guys have performances like this, I have to imagine it, it gets you pretty excited for what you guys can be going forward. It's it's hard it's hard to see the forest through the trees sometimes, especially when you're in the midst of the season. And um, I'm not very patient, but you know that's that's the reality of where we're at. And um, I mean, for us to be where we're at, 13 and 10, to have the non-conference that we've had, um, and I mean, look at our conference. I mean, our, we lost two games at home against UNLV early on. We lost two games against San Jose State. Um, not to say, I mean, on paper, but I mean. I thought for the most part overall, I mean, we did a pretty good job, um, all things being considered. But uh, we got a lot, a lot of work to, you know, a lot of room to grow. We got a lot of work to do. But um, I, I do think that we got the right guys in the locker room. You know, they got the right character. They got the right work ethic. And um, it takes time, too. And, and some of these freshmen, it's, you know, there's, there's peaks and valleys. Look at UNLV with, you know, with Nick Blake. I mean, he came in as the preseason Mountain West freshman of the year. And, had a lot of hype coming in, and, and you can just see it. it's it's hard. I mean, it's even harder this year with COVID. I mean, I think just from a mental standpoint for some of these younger guys, luckily for Graham, I mean, he didn't have to kind of go through that just because he wasn't able to play. And so you're seeing where he's he's pretty fresh right now. Um, and so it's it's one of those deals where you can't lower the bar, which I've told him, I tell him every day, but you also have to understand it's a growing process. But you know, luckily, some of these guys are learning, are getting to grow by playing, and that's the only way you get better is by playing. And uh, a lot of our guys are getting that opportunity to play. Davis. Jeff, you mentioned uh, Thompson, uh, 12 more points. He seems to be shooting the ball better here. Of late. How big is that for you guys at this time of year? You know, going into the countless term. Well, it just allows us to have. You know, a guy, that, as I told before, I mean, he's, he's a hard matchup. As you can see there, he, he broke the game open there in the second half when if you want to put your five-man on him, now he's going to really put problems in, in, in the way that you know, he's gotten really good in terms of just playing out of those slips, whether to set them, whether to get out of them. Our guards are starting to figure that out. And that's when you become really hard to guard, and that takes time to develop. Um, it's easy to guard plays, but when you got guys that know how to play in space and, and a guy like Thompson who just – he forces the other team to do a lot of different things, and now you want to put your post player on Thompson or somebody else. Well, now he's trying. You know, they're having to do something completely different than what they've ever worked on. And so, um, I'm just more proud of Thompson. Just as you know, he's never griped once about coming off the bench. I mean, he's got you know, he lost his spot in the starting lineup to to Graham. Never blinked an eye. Never had a, you know, just all he does is keep coming in, wanting to get better. Um, he's just happy to be here. And uh, that's and those guys they end up finding a way to be productive because they care. Um, there's a lot to there's a lot to caring, and um, and he really cares. And I'm just glad that he kind of got out. Him and Drake kind of got out of that funk. It just allows us to be that much harder to guard. As you saw in the first half, when you had Thompson, Drake, Kenny, um, you had those guys X on the floor with Maldo. I mean, it opens up a lot of space, a lot of room to drive. Cody. Um. Marcus Williams seems like he's been very active on the defense end of the floor, but are you concerned at all with only eight points over the last two games? Um, yeah, and it's you know one of those deals where um, you know kind of like Nick Blake. I mean, for what you know, last probably you know whatever month or so. I mean, not sure if he's hit a wall or it's it's you know he's realizing that college basketball is hard. It's hard when you're you know the the leading scorer and you're the focus of the other team's scouting report. Um, you know you're having other older players guarding you, especially when you're playing against the better teams. Um, and so it's one of those deals where if he learns from it, he'll get a lot better because um, the reality is he's played a lot of minutes as a freshman, a lot more minutes than most freshmen get to play, a lot more um, situations than most freshmen get to play. But, you know, there's also a lot of freshmen that have to sit the bench. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, for me, it's about the guys are going to go out there and, and they're going to put forth the, the effort that allows us to win games, to make winning plays. And, um, and that's right now, I mean, as of you know, in this game, it just felt like we were, we were better off with some other guys in there. And it's, you know, he has a choice. I mean, he can feel sorry for himself or, like Graham did, can come in and get better. But um, that's, that's up to him.